witnessing a constant duel. A duel arbitrated by a strong depression that left New Zealand heading towards the Antarctic, right on our leader's route. Yesterday, Armel Leclerc had to get around the depression over the north and consequently reduced by 100 miles his lead on Alex Thompson, which boosted the Welch's morale. Currently doing 22, 23, 24 knots. Sometimes we're going down waves at 30 right now, so it's a uh, marvelous fun. <laughs> uh, 28, 29. Uh, don't want to get too excited, we'll have to see the outcome of this, what happens with this low. But at the end of the day, Armel veered southeastward, while Alex remained on the border north. Great sparring between the two men. As you can see, for the first time for a long time, I'm actually on the deck of the boat, and that's because I don't have any wind. <laughs> Definitely Armel's in a better place than I am now, and, and he's already moving on the other side in the northerly uh, airflow. So the v, as they say, not much we can do about that and uh, I just have to carry on working, work harder once, uh, once I get the breeze. This complex weather system particularly worries Yann Eliès, Jean-Pierre Dic and Jean Le Cam. In the days to come, they will endure a huge storm of 50 to 70 knots winds and 10 meter waves. Jean-Pierre Dic announced this afternoon his intention to cross the Bass Strait between Tasmania and Australia a longer, but a safer way. Jan Elias is also rerouting towards the north. Jean Le Cam remains southward, but will need to slow down so to let the depression pass by. In ninth position, Louis Burton runs his race at a good pace, in spite of the rough sea. It's been two or three days now, since the Kerguelen Islands, that the sea is rather choppy and short. It's for me that it's hard to deal with. Always bugging. It's even difficult to stand on the boat. Conditions are a little extreme. I mean, downright extreme. However, what's nice is that there's wind all the time. And since I love the breeze, I'm thrilled. Uh, sailors, she's done all the major races, uh, the Transat Jacques Barbara, the Route de Rome, the Barcelona World Race, uh, and she knows quite a lot about uh, ocean racing. She's also the partner and team manager for uh, Bureau Valley. She spoke earlier on to, uh, to Louis Berton, and uh, he is, of course, the second Welshman in the race. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Van. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and Marcus Hutchison uh, from uh, SMA, the project director. Uh, Marcus, uh, welcome back again. Um, a good race for uh, Paul Mia at the moment. What are your thoughts on Paul? Well, it's... it's it's difficult to live uh, with all of that going on. It's difficult for all of the project managers um, because we're only ever one phone call away from having the kind of call that uh, Quito de Pamont had to make to his team manager. But uh, we're very, very happy and very proud for Paul. He's sailing a, a really smart race. And uh, it's nice to have somebody like that who's responding well. He does good media. He's, he's always positive. You know, he's had a few problems with the boat, but he's managed to fix everything. And um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying watching him sail, and I, I said to him before the start, enjoy it, because if you enjoy yourself, you'll sail well, and that's what's going on. Fantastic, Marcus. Let's have a look at the, uh, the 3D, the uh, situation uh, at uh, midday today, uh, as we fly through the fleet uh, from the uh, back to the front. Well, uh, starting off with uh, Sebastian Destremo, he crossed the Cape of Good uh, Hope yesterday, uh, now racing Rome and Atanasio, one mile uh, between them in terms of distance to finish, and they're both chasing uh, Didac Costa, less than 300 miles ahead. Meantime, Peter Harima up in the north has been having his problems. He's been fixing pilots uh, and uh, making mainsail repairs. Then the uh, group of four, uh, still have a 100 miles between them. That's Endo Akoinin, uh, Alan Rura, Eric Bellion and uh, Rich Wilson. Northwest of the uh, Kerguelens, uh, Fabrice Amadeo has been making uh, good progress, gaining on uh, Conrad Coleman and uh, Cali Boissier. And they are 300 miles, so less than a day behind uh, a match race uh, between uh, Nandor Fa and, uh, and uh, Stefano de Raison. There's uh, only uh, 54 miles between them. And then around 300 miles in front, uh, we have uh, Louis Burton, uh, approach, sorry, he's in, leading the, uh, the peloton, still riding the same system. Thomas Riong approaching Cape Lewin, uh, south of Australia. Jean Lecam, Jean-Pierre Dick uh, and Jan Elias taking cover from the uh, Big Low. 
third place for Paul, Paul Maya and uh, Jeremy Bio, both into the Pacific. And at the front, it's still this little battle between uh, Armel Leclerc and uh, Alex Thompson. Uh, really, the next few days will be uh, quite critical. So, uh, Servan, you spoke uh, earlier with, uh, with Louis. How is he? It was uh, good, some emotion, and, uh, because it's always difficult to, to speak uh, with Louis, which I am the team manager, but I, I am also his uh, campaign wife, not wife, but... <laughs> and uh, it's always difficult to speak with a lot of people in the, in the area, uh, because that was a little surprise. But it was uh, uh, good because I, I heard uh, a, a beautiful voice and I know him and he was uh, happy and uh, no, not stressful, so good. Because the last weekend that was a uh, lot of stress because of the iceberg not far and uh, some uh, technical uh, worries. So today is a good day. And he's having a good race. Yes. Yeah, he is having a very, very good race. He's, um, he, he shows uh, how he is very uh, hard. Uh, um, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. Indeed, Servan, we'll come back to you in a minute. We do have Paul Maya, hopefully uh, on the line uh, from SMA. Paul, how are you? Hey, I'm fine, and you? Yeah, very good. Uh, how's things on board the uh, SMA? You're into the Pacific now, and uh, you're having a great race. Ah, yes. It was a night, yeah? Yes. Um, and the wind is decreasing tonight, so... I'm, uh, the boat is still fast, so I'm happy, but uh, it's better uh, because the sea is, is more flat. And uh, maybe uh, I can have uh, some, uh, some good sleep, so it's good. And Paul, meantime, the timing for you is very good because you have the big depression behind you. You're missing out on the uh, the big low. Ah uh, yes, that's a good point uh, because uh, this this depression, this low pressure is um, is really bad. I think the wind is gonna be 50 or 60 knots, maybe more, and so it's good to be in in front, just in front, and uh, we're gonna avoid us uh, avoid this uh, this low pressure with Jeremy. So I'm happy, but. Uh, after the situation, weather situation is really um, difficult. And we stopped after maybe two or three days after New Zealand. And uh, uh, it's, it's hard with uh, this um, uh, Antarctic uh, exclusion zone. Uh, it just, um, we, we, we can be, we can go on the south. Uh, so we're going to gonna gonna try to 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 take the wind like like it is like it is but uh, it's uh, like a big big uh, high pressure we're gonna block uh, block the, the the boat in meantime Paul we're at 35 days of racing how are you uh, I'm good I'm good uh, sometimes it's hard because uh, the, the most difficult thing is uh, the boat is always moving and moving a lot, and uh, so it's a bit stressful. Uh, sometimes uh, it's it's hard to, to find find some sleep because uh, you're you're just uh, beginning to, to to sleep a bit, and uh, and the boat uh, just uh, take a big big wave, and uh, and uh, and uh, and the speed grow grow uh, like. A, 30 knots, and so after you, you take the, the, way, the, the, the next wave in front and, uh, and the boat stops, so sometimes it's, uh, it's hard, but, uh, but uh, I think tonight is uh, going to be a good night. Good. Now listen, you, you, your boat is the old Massif, which is the uh, race winner. What advice, what information did uh, Francois Gabar give to you before the race? Uh, to take the to take pleasure, I think it's uh, the first uh, advice. Take pleasure and uh, and uh, have a. Uh, and I think this boat is is, uh, is easy to manage, so so um, I'm happy to 
use this boat because it's a, it's a good boat to, to do the Vendée Globe, and uh, I think uh, I think I know the boat like it, like it is, so I'm happy uh, to don't have foil and uh, and use this boat at 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 hundred percent and full uh, and full speed. Good. And listen, Paul, we have the uh, the Grand Fromage with us with uh, Marcus Hutchison, who'd like to say a few words. Hey, Paul. Good to see you. I see you haven't shaved your beard off, which is good. <laughs> um, so, are you? Uh, ever, the boat is 100% for you. You have all the sails. Everything's going okay. Oh uh, yes, yes. I have all the sails. Speed is good, and uh, every day I have some little problems to to fix. But uh, I see. Uh, after. Uh, after half, uh, halfway of, uh, of Vendée Globe, and uh, uh, I try to keep it uh, like this. Do you think you will see uh, the two islands in front of you, Campbell Island and uh, Auckland Island, when you go past the bottom of New Zealand? I hope, I hope, because uh, I, I, I didn't see uh, land uh, uh, since the start, so maybe it's, uh, it's going to be this time. So. Uh, if it's uh, if it's on my road, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it will be a good thing. That's for sure. That's for sure. So this big depression behind you, uh, and Jeremy, who's uh, still going quite fast, but uh, you, you're pretty comfortable and confident that you will be ahead of it. Yes. 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 It's, uh, normally, it's okay. Uh, Maybe we're going to have some, maybe 30 knots in front, but uh, with a good sea, and so I think it, it's okay. But uh, see, the situation is particularly difficult for, for a few days after, uh, but uh, it's, it's more uh, about light wind, uh, not, uh, not strong wind. Well, that's when you're very good. You know how to sail when the weather's complicated. Okay, Paul, keep, keep sailing strong and uh, continue to have fun. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you very much, Paul. Hopefully join you again in, uh, in a few days. Uh, good luck and good speed. See you. So Paul May are then uh, lying in third place, having good race. And Marcus, uh, sound in good form. I mean, uh, I think the key thing there, the key thing from that was he just saying how easy it is to sail the boat. You know, uh, in it's, relative terms. It's, uh, a lot of decisions about this Vendée Globe we had to make uh, with, a bit of a, with a bit of a hurry. We had a lot of pressure. With a, it's a new team. We had a good boat. We had a really good squad of guys working on the boat. We had an accident almost exactly a year ago with the boat. And so when we got the boat back in, um, in January, we were up against it in terms of getting it ready for the qualifiers. We didn't put foils on the boat. We fought hard to keep foils off the boat. And... Um, I'm really pleased with that decision, and I think Paul just summed it up there nicely, saying uh, it was the right decision, certainly for him. And um, uh, you know, he's comfortable with that boat. He sailed it a lot now. He knows it inside out. We, the team, knows it very well, and so uh, he's 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 sailing comfortably. He's sailing uh, how he knows how to sail. And he said the boat's still at 100 percent. All his sails still intact. Everything else? Yeah, the boat is intact. He has 100 percent of his sails. Uh, there's no damage of anything, anything significant anywhere that he hasn't been able to fix. And uh, yeah, he's not running out of food either. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Servan, your thoughts on Paul's race and uh, the top rookie? Incredible. Sorry, it's, it's no sorry. Your thoughts on Paul Mea and his I race? Yeah, very, very uh, nice to follow. He is always uh, smiling. He is uh, he's running our boat, uh, his boat. Uh, and it's very, very good. Impre in impressive. Uh, impressive. Impressive. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, how often do you speak with uh, with Louis during the race? I never, never uh, call him. Uh, if he needs, he call. He calls me, but nev I never call uh, him because I don't want to to be at the bad uh, moment, uh, but by mail, uh, maybe 10, 10 times per 24 hours. 10 times? Because of the, of the job, because of the boat, because yeah. of the Imoca, because of the, the children, business. because of everything. It's a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, less difficult for me, but uh, I make a little my Vendée Globe as well. <laughs> and is it harder for you to live the race as a sailor? Uh, it's uh, difficult in uh, one thing, it's um, 
Uh, You're always looking at the grip files and working yes, out what is going to be happening. Uh, that's the fun part. But the bad part is uh, I know uh, what he what he lives with when he is in the south or when he have he has a big uh, trouble with the material, and sometimes uh, uh, because of uh, I am the mother of his children, I would like not to know everything. <laughs> uh, but uh, for the team manager, it's the very good. <laughs> Uh, to be a sailor, I think it's uh, good when, uh, when you Thank work you with this project, but not like a mother. And what are your thoughts on Alex Thompson? What I, what I think? Of Alex Thompson's race. Uh, I, I am fond of uh, the two boats, uh, the, the big wars they are uh, dealing together. I like because they are so different. And uh, I, I appreciate um, Alex for a long time because I think he's uh, somebody, uh, he's a fighter, but he's a nice guy. And, uh, Absolutely. Yes. He's and tell me about Louis' uh, Welsh heritage. Yes, he has uh, one arm. Uh, Which is Welsh. Arm, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from his father. Yeah. So we are not in the big war with, uh, with uh, the Welsh people and the English people. But I laugh, I laugh because all the French claim that Alex is, uh, is Welsh and all the reports yes. say Welshman Alex Welshman, Thompson. Welshman, which, <laughs> yes. Which is very good. Anyway, thanks very much, uh, Sir Van. Alex Thompson, uh, as, we, uh, as we well know, is into the, uh, this low-pressure low system working round to the north. The outcome really will be in a few days' time. But Alex has uh, sent a few videos uh, and uh, all was smiling. And this is his most recent one. Hi everybody, well as you can see for the first time for a long time I'm actually on the deck of the boat and that's because I don't have any wind. <laughs> so uh, I'm stuck a, a bit in the middle of the low pressure uh, and I will bleed miles all day today so fans of, uh, of mine and Hugo Boss don't look at the tracker today, it'll be a painful day. Um, the wind will come back in the end but uh, Definitely Armel's in a better place than I am now and, and he's already moving on the other side in the northerly uh, airflow. Salavi, as they say, not much we can do about that and uh, I just have to carry on working, work harder once, uh, once I get the breeze. Hysterical, isn't it? Alex has spoken French at last, but uh, no, on good form, and as this smile continues uh, through, the, uh, through the race. We spoke with uh, Ross Daniel. Ross is uh, Alex, or Alex Thompson Racing's uh, technical director. He speaks with the boat uh, two or three times a day. Sometimes it's just to de-stress uh, Alex, just to talk about normal life, and sometimes it's to talk about the repairs. This, he said, is the most stressful time, and this is Ross. Ross, uh, yes. What's life been like uh, for you as uh, Alex goes through the, that big storm the last two or three days? Just been normal, really. <laughs> no, normal uh, sort of race support stuff. It, it doesn't really matter whether it's in a storm or in, in light conditions. I think you know, the team back here, we, we're all in the same mode. Um, obviously, the, the busier time is now. There's a lot of periods through that rough section where Alex couldn't really move around the boat. Yeah, we had a good 36 hours where he's unable to go on deck outside of the cockpit and check the boat. So now he's uh, now the conditions have got better. He's had a good chance to have a look around, and you know, there's a few minor jobs that come up. So uh, we're just going through some small repair processes for him so he can get onto them before he gets back into the uh, the other side of the low pressure and stronger winds. What kind of things, Ross? But mainly just deck rings, a few bits of chafe on on a couple of the lines, and um, they're not critical now, but. He's still got half the race to, to, to get through, so just doing a, a repair now when he's got the time will we'll help him in the future. He sends these videos and he's got a fantastic smile on his face. Is, uh, is that the real Alex at the moment, or how is he really? Yeah, he wasn't smiling two days ago. <laughs> the video he did that night, um, I actually found it quite haunting myself. But, uh, yeah, he's good. good. I literally got a phone with him um, 30 minutes ago and he was you know, having a laugh and just about general life and he's back to to uh, taking the mick and having a, <laughs> having a giggle. So, yeah, he, he, he's, he's fine, mate. He's totally fine. Thanks, Ross. All the best. All right, mate. Cheers. So that's Ross Daniel speaking this morning. Uh, Marcus, uh, no stress for Ross when the big storm's on like yourself? Well, I, think, uh, I think we're all stressed until the boats are tied up to the dock, quite honestly. Um, but I agree, it's, you know, uh, the, when the weather's bad, we all think it's the worst time, but in reality, things go wrong all the time. So, uh, um, no, thoughts out. A fantastic race, Ross, if you're watching this, and uh, all the Hugo Boss team, we really hope you, hope you, hope you manage to pull it off. Fantastic job.
And uh, you wa how closely do you watch the front of the fleet? Obviously, you oh, monitor yeah, your own guy. Time. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, they're, they're, they're two or three days ahead uh, right now. Um, uh, as Paul mentioned, um, you know, the, the South Pacific is going to be a little bit more complicated. I, I'm not sure where it really... I'm not able to look into the, the tea leaves at the bottom of the cup as to know how the weather's going to pan out, but um, I think it's going to be a very different uh, ocean to cross than was the Indian Ocean. Um, and uh, the, the, the ice zone is going to block the way for some people, whether they're going to have a free run all the way through or whether they're actually going to have to sail upwind and upwind in light or medium airs and, and things like that. Uh, uh, we, we're still to see, but um, it's really interesting what's happening at the front of the race, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated to hear the debrief from all of these guys. It won't be the few days after the finish. It'll be six <laughs> months or a year afterwards, but there's an awful lot to come out of this, that's for sure. The thing for Alex at the moment is the next uh, seven or eight days he'll be on port, uh, his less favoured uh, less favoured jibe. But really, it's just about uh, keeping going and, and uh, working up the Atlantic, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, um, I'm very sceptical about this. Uh, you know, we're, we're quite happy without, without the foils. They definitely have an advantage uh, in certain conditions. But I think an awful lot more has been made out of foils, no foils, than, than really should have been. Um, uh, you know, Alex and uh, Armel are sailing a, a really strong race together. And I think you'll probably find that for every time that Alex... Uh, uh, wishes he's had, had his foil intact, you probably find that our mill hasn't even got his foil extended. So uh, it's a great race, what's going on between those two, and I think there's an awful lot more to it than just foils. A little bit of psychological warfare. I don't think so between the two of them, but, no, uh, but, we, but outside. It, it I think we're, 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 it's easy for us to put our finger on something and say that's why, that's, that's it, why, that's and all it. the rest of it. But and it's, it's fascinating to hear Alex, because Alex always comes back and just says, doesn't matter, whatever's happening just now, doesn't matter, it's only in a few days' time... We do have uh, Nandor Fa uh, on board the Spirit of Hungary, and Nandor also is having a great race at the moment. He uh, had just a sniff of 10th place the other day, uh, and he's uh, presently 11th, still uh, match racing with uh, Stefan Le de Raison. Uh, Nandor Fa, how are you? Hello, Andy. Hi. hi. Uh, my greetings to the BC course and uh, the media centre, and my greetings to my friends all over the world in Hungary and uh, in France and everywhere. Uh, I'm here. I'm sailing quite fast since uh, a couple of days, and uh, we are moving quite well. At the moment, uh, I have some sunshine, which, which makes it much nicer than, than in the last time. Uh, the last few days was absolutely cloudy, rainy, cloud, uh, cold, and uh, it was really a negative negative condition, but uh, right now that's okay. So, Nandor, you had a little uh, period that you were in 10th. Is that important to you? Uh, say it again, please. I'm saying you had a short period that you were in 10th position. Is that important to you? Uh, Behind us, there is a huge front, and uh, we are running in front of the front at the moment with that wind uh, from north northwest. Uh, it's about uh, right now it's uh, 28 knots of uh, uh, wind speed, and I make 20, 21 knots of boat speed. So this is quite good now. And since two days uh, we are running with this wind, uh, we picked up. Uh, uh, hundreds, hundreds of miles before, and uh, we are running all together with the front, and uh, we are moving with the same speed, like the the front is moving, and uh, we could we could uh, stay in front of it, which uh, was really good and and nice for a while. For the last last day, uh, the the wind was a little bit lighter. Uh, before that, it was about. 35, 40 knots of wind, that was okay. I was fast and uh, everything was all right. But uh, when the wind is lighter, I, I miss very much my A7 Genek Air, which I lost uh, quite early in the race. And on, on top of it, uh, I had a problem with the furling gear uh, on the bow street. So I couldn't use the reacher either. So I was sailing only with the mainsail and the solan. Uh, but uh, it was not good, not fast enough, and uh, this morning 
I, I repaired everything, and uh, it was quite wet uh, to put it back, but I could put back on the plate, and now the reacher is up, and I'm doing a good, good uh, speed again. Uh, I like it, and uh, our progress is quite, quite good. Uh, we are close to Stefan, uh, to each other, and uh, sometimes I'm faster, sometimes he's faster. Uh, as long as I didn't have the reacher, he was faster than me. But right now, I, I guess uh, we are in uh, in uh, parallel. Uh, we are sailing with the same speed, and uh, we will see in the next days. So, Nando, you're on form. You're uh, in good spirits. Ah, yes, yes, the spirit is all right. No problem. I feel good. Uh, just I heard uh, this morning. I heard I was uh, for a short period. I was tenth on the list which is fantastic. It is far beyond my dream uh, to be in the top 10. This is, uh, uh, in spite of that, it's nice. Uh, the race is uh, very, very long, and uh, we are not on the halfway. But uh, to be uh, in, in the top 10, this is always, always nice, especially in this age, who I'm very proud about. Uh, but all, all the mood on board is, is very very good. I, I feel good and I enjoy sailing, I enjoy my boat, I enjoy the weather, I enjoy very much this front which is pushing us now. Uh, we, we can make about 500, 600 miles with the same front. This is fantastic. Okay Nandor, thank you very much for calling us. Uh, we'll speak again in a few days. Uh, great work uh, on Spirit of Hungary. Thank you Nandor. So that's uh, Nandor Fa in uh, 11th place, about 50 miles behind uh, Stefan Le de Raison. Let's have a look at the uh, weather situation. Uh, as I say, difficult at the uh, front uh, and also for Jean-Pierre Dick. Let's hear what my uh, evil twin brother has to tell us. It's coming. So week number six on the race course, it's starting relatively slowly all the way through the fleet uh, in relative terms, but it's going to be very active in the middle of the week, in particular for uh, Jean-Pierre Dick uh, and Jan Elias going into a very, very tough uh, low-pressure system, and they're having to make some decisions just now. Starting off, though, looking at the uh, front of the fleet, uh, where we see uh, Alex Thompson uh, and uh, Irma Leclerc, about 80 miles uh, separation just now. Uh, Alex going to the north of this uh, low-pressure. Uh, light breezes for him just now, but he should emerge uh, later on in the day into the stronger southwesterlies and should be going uh, faster. Meantime, uh, Arma Leclerc to the south, he really is uh, slightly uh, upwind uh, in the uh, latter part of the day and that's going to be an interesting uh, situation. How, see how that develops over the next 24 to 36 hours. Alex will be quicker uh, initially, uh, but uh, I think that perhaps uh, Armel may have some problems with the uh, upwind situation. Meantime, with uh, the two boats behind, in particular uh, SMA and, uh, and uh, Jeremy Biu, they're in nice conditions just now, uh, northwesterlies, where they really do have the best timing uh, for the moment. Uh, and uh, they're in this northwesterly. They're really uh, going to have quite a, a solid week. But as I say, the, uh, the big dilemma at the moment uh, is for the, uh, the two boats here, which is uh, Jean-Pierre Dick uh, on, uh, on uh, Veerbach, uh, Sorry, Saint Michel Vierbach and, uh, and Jan Elias. Jan Elias is heading to the south. Now he will find some uh, shelter down uh, towards the a a Antarctic exclusion zone. Uh, Jean Pierre Dick is going to have to route uh, all the way to the north. If we look at the uh, second page, we'll see the situation. Now this is in two days' time, so you see that there is uh, 40, 50 knots of breeze uh, in the middle of or the top part of this uh, de depression. Uh, and uh, it's a long way up there for uh, Jean Pierre Dick. He is routing north. And it's good. the other option he has is to, uh, to slow down. Uh, Jan Elias, as I say, heading to the south, and he will get uh, some, uh, some shelter or uh, a better situation along the An Antarctic exclusion zone. Meantime, not so bad for the, uh, the uh, guys in the uh, latter part of the fleet, the second half of the fleet. They have, uh, they're really under the influence of these two high-pressure systems. Uh, not, uh, there will be low pressures coming through for them later on. Uh, the uh, key problem just now is really in this little uh, high-pressure ridge uh, for these three boats. Uh, otherwise, a uh, nice uh, situation here under the, uh, under the high pressure. Good uh, northwesterly breezes for uh, Nandor Fa uh, and uh, Stefan Le De Raison. Uh, and uh, Louis Berton going very nicely, still in the uh, same system. Uh, um, Thomas Riong 
uh, going nicely on the front of the uh, front of the high pressure system and uh, also uh, things going quite well out here for the uh, three boats at the back Sebastian Destremo into a good breeze uh, northwesterly regime uh, and uh, is going well also Roman Antanasio who restarted uh, and uh, just in front of them uh, Didac Costa uh, also in this nice uh, northwesterly breeze and a great race for them but uh, really some uh, difficult decisions uh, at the front of the fleet and for Jean-Pierre Dick and Jan Elias but that's the weather for the moment So that's the weather situation. An interesting week ahead, uh, Marcus. Indeed there is. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see how quickly uh, Armel and uh, Alex get, extract themselves from that uh, situation in the front because the Pacific is an area that we haven't really had experience of for this race yet and uh, it's going to be different, certainly with that uh, high exclusion zone. Um, I'm very, also very happy that it sounds like Paul and Jeremy are going to escape. Got good timing. Their, their timing's good for once and they'll be able to scoot, a, scoot ahead. Um, and stay out of trouble. One person who we've not uh, really talked about uh, this programme is uh, Peter Rima on uh, No Way Back, our Dutch skipper. Has had one or two problems with his uh, autopilots and also with his uh, mainsail. We did speak to him earlier on, but listen to it on the website. It is uh, up and uh, running on the website just now. So that's it for our uh, Vondi Globe Live uh, in this edition. Uh, join us tomorrow. Our guest is the uh, Spanish sailor Alex Pea, uh, winner of the Route de Rum in the uh, Class 40 and also member of the IDEC crew. Uh, join us tomorrow, same time and the same place. J'ai redescendu un peu. Petite face à face avec le colibri. Yes Bon bah ça y est, j'ai de nouveau un lazy bag. Euh, ça c'est cool, ce que ça veut dire, je peux euh, de nouveau euh, manipuler ma grand voile et donc là je vais en profiter renvoyer euh, renvoyer mes deux rides euh, voilà c'est très compliqué avant de, de de renvoyer la grand voile parce que sans les e-bag j'aurais pas pu la, la réaffaler enfin, ça aurait été compliqué donc euh, voilà là je suis monté au mât euh, tout à l'heure et j'ai réussi à, à faire euh, à refaire un lazy bag complet voilà donc euh, bah c'est parfait et yes ça c'est cool Wouhou oui bonjour aujourd'hui à bord de Finistère Mervan en direct de Finis de Uber hein, du bateau Uber pour, euh, pour Radio France Bleu on va faire un petit, un petit récapitulatif de la semaine et puis euh, tout mon service de presse euh, qui a travaillé euh, pour m'envoyer un écrit que je vais vous lire. Bon, bon tout mon service de presse, euh, c'est euh, Anne, euh, ma femme, et puis Anne, ma femme, et, et puis il y a aussi Anne, ma femme, voilà. Donc, euh, donc voilà, et aujourd'hui, bah, il est 11h du matin, il faut savoir que... Euh, on est euh, dehors, il fait, euh, il fait bah, le soleil est en train de se coucher chez nous. Hein, donc midi chez vous, euh, chez nous le soleil se couche. Donc voilà, je vais vous, vous lire cette, euh, cette interprétation que je trouve euh, magnifique d'ailleurs. Donc euh, voilà. Donc le grand bleu fait souffrir les bateaux et fait grandir les marins. Nous avons tous notre lot de galères. Nous en parlons ou pas mais c'est le tribut à payer au Vendée Globe. Certaines de ces galères prennent une tournure dramatique, comme pour Quito de Pavant. 
contraint d'abandonner son bateau. Comme pour Sébastien Joss, contraint d'abandonner. Pour ces deux-là, le vent de globe se refuse à eux, et cela nous semble injuste. Et puis il y a des galères qui nous font grandir. Schnorkel arraché pour Tom Rouille, Safran a changé pour Eric Bellion, Safran a reconstruire pour Romain Athanasio, Feu à bord et Vrac monumental pour Conrad. Ils se sont dépassés et ils ont lutté contre eux-mêmes pour trouver les ressources et l'énergie nécessaires pour réparer et continuer leur route. Et puis il y a ceux qui font leur route sans faire de bruit, mais avec constance. Paul Meya, Nandorfor, Didac Costa entre autres. J'ai aussi une pensée pour Morgan Lagravière qui en toute honnêteté a parlé de la dureté de cette expérience. Il n'y a pas à le juger, juste à respecter, car je mets au défi des gens qui le détraquent de tenir ne serait-ce que 24 heures à fond la caisse sur ce genre d'engin. Il faut laisser le temps aux jeunes marins de maturer comme le bon vin et leur donner les moyens de faire leur expérience. Ils sont ardents et couillus. Je pense à Alan aussi. Et aussi cette semaine a été dévoilé le nouveau concept de la Barcelona World Race. Une étape à Sydney et la possibilité de changer de co-skipper. Donc voilà, voilà un petit peu une actualité, ben une actualité qui est, qui est fort bien dite d'ailleurs. Bravo Anne. Et, et puis j'espère que ça vous plaira. Allez, je vous remercie. Et puis... Euh, Bonne journée à tous et puis je vous envoie une petite image euh, du coucher de soleil quand même. Mais là je peux pas le faire euh, comme ça, il euh, faut que je repasse hein, encore sur l'autre caméra. Allez, à plus. Et voilà, caméra 2, nous sommes effectivement sur le, sur le sujet. Hein, C'est-à-dire que là c'est le coucher de soleil, il est 11h du matin et on, on voit là le, 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 le soleil qui se couche à l'extérieur. Donc euh, le bateau qui file euh, vive allure, moyenne allure on va dire. Et donc nous allons euh, dans les prochaines 24 heures rencontrer à bord de Finistère Mervan une, une dépression assez conséquente. Et voilà. Allez à bientôt. Au revoir.